With our log out of the way, we can now have some fun with the demo. So with our cube, I'm just going to press numpad 1, look at it from front view. I actually have my keys displaying, so you should be able to follow along with my key presses, but we'll just press GZ1, place this up top, SX, skeleton on the X, SZ, and, and before we actually skeleton on the Z, we want to press Control A and reset the location to be at the base. And then we can press SZ2 and scale it up twice on the Z. Control A to apply to scale so we don't have any weirdness. And from here would be a good time to basically in object mode press Alt X. And we could just Alt scroll through our mirror until we get to bisect. And we want to get bisect mod actually and just perform a bisect mirror modifier where we split the mesh in half. And first thing I'll do is grab this corner, bevel it, and we'll just slide these points around. Every time I do it just slightly different, just to have a little bit of fun with the concept. We'll do the same thing here, slide this one up, maybe slide this one a lot further back. However, if we Alt X and we mirror to the other side, right now I'm actually using machine tools, so, or a mesh machine. So what I'll need to do is press F4, bring up my preferences, and turn it off because I do like being able to use our mirror in edit mode. And we'll just take a moment to go ahead and turn it off, just so that way I can press Alt text and get back to my classic mirror in edit mode. And from here, we can just press Control B and bevel this edge. Grab this edge and also bevel it, just round it out a little bit. We can grab this one and bevel it. As we see with our boundary in the middle, we can only bevel it so far, but it's perfectly fine. We'll bevel this edge as well. And we can just mirror to the other side using the bisect mod and press Q and click on S sharp in order to sharpen it. From here we can press Alt V and jump to EV HQ which will give us a little bit more richer shading in the viewport which just assists me whenever I'm working. And what I want to do from here is select this face all the way to here and we just want to give a stress test of selection of boolean which I can guarantee is going to fail in this case but oh here we are able to perform the inset and the extrusion and that is actually the process completed successfully. Of course, we have a little bit of overlap that we have to talk about, but that's fine. And also you're probably wondering why everything became a hole in the mesh. And that's because our original mesh isn't actually manifold. So whenever we sort with the mirror, we're placing the mirror after the Boolean, and that's not gonna work out for this. So just by placing the mirror up ahead, everything's fine. We can actually just bring this piece back. If if we wanted to re-mirror it, we could, where we just press Alt-X, press A, A, in order to switch to new modifier, and just add a new modifier like so. But that's not really the route I'm trying to go. Instead, we want to deal with that on the cutter level. So first I'll bring this over to the other side, and we'll select the cutter, select the main mesh, press Alt-X, and we can press X to reset it because there is no mirror, and we only want to deal with a singular mirror. And so first I'll click this one while holding shift it in order to keep it live. Now I'll click the last one in order to jump over. And there we are with our first cutout. So from here we can just shift this bowl in our Q menu for selecting the cutter and shift it into being a mesh again. And we see these kind of uh, degenerate edges because of all of our near misses. Normally I can ignore these. However, if you're not the type of person to ignore them until the end, you could always just go under add modifier and just control click weld to add a new weld and we see that that's nicely cleaned up and we can also do the same thing here it doesn't matter we're, we're going to be doing that same cut over and over to uh, get equally smaller pieces and so with this one first thing i want to do is go under operations in the q menu and run a smart apply and we could just select this press c in order to just paint our selection giving us this result and we could just go under the Q menu for edit mode to selection of boolean again and we're just going to cut inside giving us this as our result so from here we can press Q and shift our bowl once again giving us that same result that all we have to do is just press Q go under add modifier add a weld and we can just clean things up pretty easily so with that, we now have a couple of layers that we can begin having some fun with. However, before all of that, we probably want to go even one more layer. So I'm going to just smart apply this piece and I'm just going to select this front plate and we'll press Q, go under edit tools to choose selection of Boolean. We can also access this under Boolean as selection of Boolean. 
and we'll just bring that all the way through to the back giving us this so because there's no um, double mirroring happening that means that whenever we perform the next step of cutting this using ingon line it's more than likely going to mirror in a way different than what we see visually so to show that in action i'm just going to press d we're going to change our tool to ingon but i'm going to uncheck it to turn it into line and from here we can just begin drawing our shape so now that we have our line created we can press spacebar and apply it and we actually see that we did not run into the error I was expecting where things weren't going to be we're going to be mirroring to the other side like so we don't actually want that but with this we can now uh, truly begin to proceed so let's just press D and we want to get out of ingon line and jump over to box we also want to activate wedge but as far as orientation instead of using object with local we want to use object with nearest edge we can always access this from the uh, shift V. However, with the convenience of the D, you can just quickly get to your orientation options on the fly without a whole lot of issue as well. So let's just begin cutting some wedges, just orient to the nearby edges that we are dealing with. And we're just cutting just a few edges to just add some visual interest to this. In fact, as I look at it, I realize we can do a reboot of the shape to get a whole lot of visual interest back. So let's have some fun with it. And thanks to the local orientation system, getting things oriented, well, just that one moment, it started being a little bit of a ninny. But for the most part, local orientation just makes getting things oriented to these variously angular lines a snap, which is just one of those things I just love seeing all the systems of box cutter come together because it's truly so much work and tasking in order to kind of keep things in line but enough talk about that from here we can just press Q go into ever scroll and let's just roll our wheel until we bring back our main cutter and we can just press Q and choose to shift this bowl into a slice so now this thing's been brought back to reality let's press D change our tool over to end gun because of shape parity, we don't have to worry about toggling the line back off. We don't have to worry about Ingon keeping its previous state, which is something I consider undesirable. We sought to get rid of that in the pie menus and everywhere else in box cutter and the control D, which now is the D helper, is no exception. So I'm drawing this shape. I don't know why I'm drawing it on the other side. I'm just going to mirror it anyway. So let's just click, right click, and we're done. I'll press 1 in order to mirror it to the other side of X, but I want to press Shift 1 because I want to keep this side and mirror this. I could also press D and access the intimate settings of mirror, but I'm so used to the hotkey that that one's just going to be a hard one to reprogram me on. I could even press G and move it, and we see that we don't have to deal with bisect clipping when it comes to moving this shape in its temporal state, which is just one of those things that I take for granted but from here we can just press spacebar and now we have this shape happening in the front so we're really making short work of this little piece that we're just doodling here and if we look at the back we also don't want to leave the back lonely so I'm just going to go in edit mode select these two faces and we can just choose selection of boolean in order to boolean this in and from here we can just shift this bool in order to get this shape and from here, we'll just run a smart apply, which will basically apply all the modifiers that are relevant for us to get to the next operation, which is selectionable for the uh, probably sixth time now. You know, old habits die hard. I definitely love me some selectionable in. So with this shape, that's an inset of an inset. We can just go behind it with ingon, which is where we're still partying, and just begin cutting some sections out to just make it look a little more visually interesting in the back. We are not going to be coming around to the back a whole lot, but when we do, we definitely want to see something happening. So the next thing is we want to go ahead and put a split down the middle just to add some additional details. So shift A plane, we can press RX90 because we never moved our 3D cursor for this session. If we press Q, we can move our solidify. And I like to press 2 when I'm in solidify in order to push it out on both directions, giving me an omni-directional solidify. And after cutting it in, we can go back into solidify and actually see the result of our cut. 
in terms of how we're affecting the object, which will make us actually make solidify a lot thicker. From here, we can select the object, press D, jump over to box, activate wedge. Everything's just in its sidebar. So convenient. It's just growing on me. The more and more I work with the helper, that it's just one of those things that definitely brings the entirety of box cutter together. And having unified buttons for everything just makes toggling between taper and wedge just a breeze. But enough about that. I could have also had mirror on so I could deal with less work when it comes to mirroring to the other side but when it comes to mirroring from this side to this side I'm definitely going to use a mirror modifier for that except I am not going to be using a mirror modifier for that I'm going to have to press D switch to box I could actually switch to ingon switch to box and that will get rid of wedge or I could have just toggled wedge off just one of the benefits of shape parity rings and we're just going to slice this piece out which means I can now press alt X mirror it to the other side and I won't have to feel guilty about it. So with this top piece, let's also have some fun with it. We will shift click smart apply, which will give us a duplicate. We can just select faces up and press I. A little bit too intensive for us to deal with with selection of Boolean, which is why we have this particular workflow. So let's actually try that again. Let's press X and actually delete faces, not only faces, that was where the mistake was made. And from here, we're just looking around ever so vigilant like hawks, looking for areas that are in need of some maintenance. So this area looking a little bit insufficient, if I say so myself, we'll just get in and just give it a little bit of supplemental help. We can also just dissolve that point, maybe even start sliding down this hold alt in order to extend just to bring it up eyeball it and get something a little bit simpler just because life's too short to be dealing with nearby vertices like we're seeing in some of these cases you know sometimes the detail just isn't worth it just just dissolve it so press Q and from here we can go under modifier and add a solidification and we press Q after selecting both of them and just turn this into a different so you know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to press D, jump over to Ingon. We're going to turn off cyclic so we get Ingon line. And we're just going to begin drawing some lines. Our lines are too big though, but we can always press D and go in and adjust the solidification of the line. And there we are. So with this, we can do the same thing as before. We could press D or uh, actually press Q with this piece selected and shift our bowl to get back the previous shape. And we'll just snap our view to the front, jump over to Ingon. Let's just box Ingon just to re our shape. Or we could have hit the specific toggle that was affecting our Ingon. But really, shape parity. It's just good to uh, be able to rely upon it. So by selecting this, we could press D, jump over to box and Let's just bring it down a wedge over here. We'll bring down a wedge holding control in order to bring a perfect wedge down whenever we jump to the extrusion process. Gotta love perfect wedge. And wedge is just short work whenever it comes to putting it with the quickness and just using the orient method of nearest to simplify the method of us getting it to go with each edge that we're orienting ourselves with as we're working. For this area, what we want to do is press D, jump back to Ngon, and let's just cut this area out. And because we cut that area out, we should go back and cut this area out. And let's save this. This will be a new version of the Qbox line. So let's press Alt W to bring back our top bar. Alt W, jump back to box cutter. And the goal was to make this without even having to uh, bring up this. But in all honesty, we could have continued to work in full screen and I could have pressed Q when under settings and use power save there, even control clicking it to bring up a dialogue window for me to type in what I want it to be. So just a classic, sometimes I forget. Anyways, continuing on with our little router box, we are going to select our main surface and shift click smart apply, which will give us access to the back where we can just paint our selection with C. I'll press I in order to inset. We'll press control I 
to get those faces. And you know, the first thing we may want to do is we could have done this with selection of Boolean too. Sometimes I just like doing it manually just to ponder the process. But here we are just uh, performing this cut manually. We'll just go under modifier, give it a solidification, select both of them, Boolean slash in order to slice it. And we see that something did not work out. So I wonder why it did not work out. Before we just start redoing things, let's uh, take a look at what we have. You know, I wonder if this edge down the middle could have done it. The other thing I wonder is could we press Control Shift B to bring up our helper and change our Boolean on this to be a exact Boolean and we see that that doesn't actually change anything. So we wonder really what we could have hotlined here that would have caused this to go so disastrously when really I think that the problem is that the mirror modifier is still not real enough I mean this is um, rookie hour please forgive me and let's select this shape again in fact let's talk about troubleshooting so we want to troubleshoot why this piece did not work out and from the looks of that that piece worked out where is it not working out? This piece. This piece also looks like it's working out, but really it could be working out better. That one is working out. This one is possibly problematic due to the location of the mirror modifier being improper thus giving us a inadequate result. So basically now that we've reordered the mirror modifier, we want this to actually come out the way it's supposed to. So if we press Alt X, we can then press A and add a new mirror. So previously in this process, I was supposed to talk about how you could just select a piece, add a new mirror modifier, and that will put a second mirror that will allow you to have a mirror at the beginning and a mirror at the end, just bypassing the rules of sorting to just help you get through your day. But I messed it all up. There I am. So we press Q and let's just smart apply in order to just apply this because I don't want to deal with that anymore. And we select a phase, control click to get to another phase. Just my favorite way of getting around whenever it comes to end guns. But before I even select all of this, I need to put my 3D cursor on this face. I'm just going to uh, shift right click and place it there this time and hopefully it works out whenever I press period and change my pivot point to 3D cursor and then I press SX0 in order to flatten it on this particular axis and we see that you know everything's looking pretty good so far however I don't like how it's sticking out so strange whenever it's get flattened you know I press SX and there's kind of an angle to it so really let's try just pressing E X to go straight out on the X and then press SX zero in order to flatten it and we see that we're able to get a much straighter result however we want to pull it out just a little bit just so we're not clipping geometry and we have to get in and start welding but just like that we we're able to create a very quick little uh, router box however the work isn't done yet you know there's always more detailing to be done and more fun to be had with these little boxes in fact i always do these whenever i'm sitting on the couch watching movies um, lately I've been into just watching time traveling movies, so I've just been watching all the great time travel movies, but my favorite will always be Primer. So from here we'll press Q, add a solidification on this, and then from here we can select this piece as well, press Q, perform a slash. Because we're not dealing with double mirror Jeopardy, we can just continue working without issue, meaning that we could press D, jump over to Box, which is Pure Box except no imitation and perform a slice and with this individual slice we can press D jump over to end gun and I've been actually calibrating to this new D system for a while and it's become just basically the way that I work now but I found it more important than ever to actually get this update out in a timely fashion to the users anytime there's a massive lore change I feel it's important to get it out rather sooner than later so that way you guys can find out about it quick. 
You might have noticed at that split moment whenever I brought up dots it revealed the top bar. That is because there is a strange bug with our dynamic system where basically if we don't have the top bar showing, your life in Blender will end. But only in the dynamic system and only in that one situation. It's the strangest thing. Uh, at the time that the bug was discovered, I was debating on, you know, basically holding things up until it was resolved. However, three releases later, we see that, you know, that wouldn't have been such a good idea and would have probably caused um, delays that would have been the best idea, especially, you know, at the end, I think I was the one who suggested, hey, if, if it requires the top bar, why don't we just enable the top bar? So, because we can't have scenarios where it crashes, I'd rather force the top bar and keep things stable as you see me continuing to work without issue than have it actually, you know, end your session and have to explain to you, yeah, we have the world's strangest bug with the top bar at this time where it's just attached to our grid for reasons beyond our understanding. But one day we'll get it resolved. In fact, me even talking about this bug for as long as I have is more justice than the bug actually deserves. So we'll just continue on just really just working this shape like nobody's business. One of my favorite aspects of box cutter is just kind of just going silent with this tool and just doing such severe damage to a mesh that, you know, there's just no need for words. You know, we call, we call that going to box city. Anyways, I'm going to select this piece and we're just going to shift click to basically smart apply a clone. And I'm going to select this ring control click to select this ring all the way around to probably about here doesn't matter how accurate we are because we can just press control I delete every vertice that isn't that vertice and we can also press Q and control click smart apply again this time converting what we just created to a curve but I see that before we do that we should control Z and go back to when this was geometry and let's just select this area select this area Let's select all of this geometry by pressing Alt-Z to go to wireframe. And we're just going to press Control-Z, put it in a group, and activate a weld. But I'm going to Control-Shift-Scroll in order to put that group as part of it. And we'll just roll the weld. We can't actually see what the weld is doing. So we may be revisiting that concept a little later. But I'm just going to roll the weld until I feel like I've seen enough. Which didn't take a whole lot of scrolls to get this simplified. And we're just going to simplify this area because it was just out of control. And from here, let's control click on Smart Apply again. And this is actually the intended result that I wanted to see. Press Q, adjust our curve. We can't get too crazy with it because it'll look like it's out of place. But from here, because I have Curve Tools enabled, which is built into Blender, it adds the functionality to curves of the ability to right click and choose to fill it. So if you don't have that enabled, you should enable it because it's just essential when it comes to working with curves in Blender. And we'll just select both these pieces, mirror this curve to the other side, select the curve, adjust curve, press S in order to smooth it. And we're just made in the shade and we're able to continue working. We can even select this piece and any other piece because they all have the same origin and mirror to the other side, keeping everything congruent. And from here, let's have a little fun, right? Um, we've been doing all these subtractive cuts, but you know, let me talk about recut because I love recut so much. You just activate it. We can just click on recut and it just gives us back recut. I don't even have to talk about the hotkey of recut. It gives me more time to talk to you guys about recut. Anyways, the talk about recuts over. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. So after clone smart applying this piece, we can just press control I duplicate it. Press Q, solidify, add a solidify modifier, and set up a difference in order to just cut into the surface. In fact, let's bring back that cutter with ever scroll and let's bull shift it. And now we have this piece that we can begin talking about and dealing with. So, my favorite trick, of course, is just switching over to Ngon cutting a pattern, pressing V to array. Sometimes I use hops array, sometimes I use box cutters array. It really doesn't matter. Every array is a good array. But let's roll back our bull and we see that, you know, for some reason that cut didn't actually go through. Let's try that again. You know, we're gonna pretend like that didn't happen. 
I say it all the time when I'm about to report a bug to the team. Sometimes I'll be using it in front of them. I'm like, I'm going to pretend like I didn't see that, all right? Because otherwise it means a report of a bug and also a revisit of a previous system that we hope to have left behind. You know, it happens. I always am telling the team our job is in makes and remakes. You know, we make an idea, we see how good we do, and then we remake it based on the user data that we receive of people complaining about how bad it was. But it's those complaints that are very essential to our process. So here we are mirroring this piece over and our router box is looking fairly complete-ish. So I'm gonna press Control S and save it. We're about 25 minutes in, meaning that we got time to slap some legs on this puppy. So I'm just gonna select everything and press Q, O, T to jump into two shape. But instead of two shape as a box, we're gonna choose convex hole, click to apply, and let's look at what we got. No, oh, no, I don't like it. Let's press X and delete it. Let's press H to hide that. And let's try it again, just with this piece selected, Q, O, T. And that gives us this piece. So this is something we could work with. And what I mean by work with is we could press D, turn off wedge, draw a box, but press X once, X twice in order to get to intersect. Or we could just press D and just jump straight to intersect. And this is all that we're gonna keep of that. So with this little piece remaining, we're just gonna press Control A and convert the geometry to mesh. And we're just gonna select these two faces, press Control I, deleting every other face. And from here, let's just take this one piece and press Q and solidify. And we see that solidify just kind of goes a little waywards. If we want it to be less waywards, we could press four and that will activate the high quality normals, which will give us a better result, giving us something like this. And we'll solidify that out, giving us some foundational feet. So from here, let's just draw some designs that will represent what will become the legs. Obviously also meaning that we're gonna to have to move the objects, but that's fine. Kind of going for some uh, really high design kind of legs on this router. You know, this is a uh, Asus router, no, just kidding. But if Asus uh, made such a device, they would definitely do it in a similar fashion. But another thing is, um, let's just control jump off of this edge and I'm gonna do something I never do on box cutter and that is press B to bevel. But we're also going to bring this face all the way up, press D, jump this over to be an intersect, press space bar and you know, basically we've kind of forced a rounded bevel around this shape just you know just to get to the end of the day you know it happens from here we can just select both of these pieces and just alt x it doesn't even matter what two pieces you picked because like i said before everything pretty much should have the same origin point except for where it comes to these legs that's a whole other story but with these legs now added we could just press gz move it up i'm going to zoom in on the grid just to make sure that we're sitting on the floor ensuring that you know we're able to render this nicely later and one of the things I'm kind of thinking is that these legs are a little tall, like this router is like able to stay safe from like floods and any other floor related goo issues. But let's just, um, first let's press control tilde and look at our modifiers. So more than likely we are going to smart apply our mirror. So really let's not do that. Let's shift click ever scroll and we're just going to scroll through until we're right before mirror and let's just control click. And so we applied everything except the mirror, meaning that we can now in edit mode, just grab this and bring this up. So whenever it comes to applying modifiers, there's so many ways that um, it can get, it, it, the question can almost make me have a computational error. If you were like, hey, how do you apply modifiers? Uh, just because there's so many different answers for it inside of hard ops, but Applying via the scrolls has always been one of my favorites. So we'll bring this shape in. We'll press X in order to turn this into a slice. From here, we'll bring out another circle, but this time we'll press D and activate taper. With taper, it isn't persistent, meaning that if I click and apply this, 
the next shape I draw is just gonna be a regular old circle. And that is by design. We found that with taper, taper is just one of those things that you either want it or you don't want it. And if you do want it, you will definitely want to activate persistent taper, which will keep it going across um, all drawings. But from here, we can just press D, jump ourselves back over the box, select this piece, and we'll just use the center as a jump off point. Press B. There I am still using the old classic hotkeys. The hotkeys will never leave us. Um, you know, and my explanation of the um, control D helper to a team was, you know, um, the pro system is us with all these hotkeys and we spent so much time refining our pro system of box cutter. However, we definitely got to reevaluate our system of catering to our beginners in order to uh, provide them an experience that's free of hotkeys. And that's pretty much the uh, foundation behind this very latest update. But from here, we've now completed the construction of this box. However, uh, there are a few additional things I would probably do. One of those is I would just slice out a random piece because, you know, you can't stop me. And because I sliced out a random piece, I can get weird with it with Ngon because Ngon's just great. I don't ha even have to hold control in order to snap. I can shift click sharpen in order to just lower to auto smooth. Didn't even have to roll the wheel for that. Press D. We're able to jump up to box and we're able to just draw the box. Press W. Quickly just add wedge detail to this particular piece as well that we just sliced out. Press Alt X. We'll just mirror that on the Y just to keep things in line. And let's just draw a box. Press V in order to array. We could press X in order to change our axis. X will always change you between X and Y. Typically with box cutter, there's no need to array on the Z, but if there is, you can always go inside the D helper to access it. So with that, we press space bar and our piece is pretty much close to complete. Control S to save. Always want to save at a pivotal moment. Sometimes Blender will snatch you out of the jaws of victory. I don't know if Victory has jaws. I don't know if you want to be in the jaws of anything, to be honest, but let's just shift click and lower our auto smooth to just get this looking a little better. And wedge is just one of those little things I just use to tick detail in all sorts of areas. I just can't stop whenever it comes to wedge and box cutter. In fact, we also have it in hops, but it's a little less popular. It's, it's more there for expansionatory and, um, exploratory purposes than it is for practical ones, but we'll be coming back to that. So control S, let's save it. If we continue on with all these micro cuts, things will get a little bit hairy when it comes to dealing with the bevel. So, and that's if we want to actually deal with the bevel on this, we could get fun and get really uh, wacky with it, you know? And by wacky, I mean, we can, let's look at the time on the clock. So we got about 32 minutes going on here. So which exit do we want to aim for? Do we want to aim for the exit of making a very crazy flapping box? Or do we want to uh, aim for the NPR line art angle? So let's actually go for the NPR line art angle because of the time management factor. We'll press shift C to place our cursor in the center and we'll shift A at a plane. We'll press S 50 to scale it up because I don't want to have to revisit the idea of scaling my plane again. I'm pressing control S to just save it, but I want to press control shift S and bring up my save as dialog window. So that way on my Q box 543, I increment this by one so I can revisit this topic from a different standpoint. So right now we're going for the NPR standpoint. So that means I'm gonna need to go under my world settings and possibly adjust my shadow. I found that adjusting my shadow just looks a lot better. Sometimes you get really weird shadows that look crazy at different angles. So by adjusting your shadow, you can uh, just ensure that your final result at least looks good in the particular view that you're in when it comes to dealing with the viewport. So we'll press uh, control space bar to get out of full screen mode, saving once again. We'll shift A, add a camera, but we're not gonna really add a camera that way because that's the blender way, right? The hard ups way is to just press Q with nothing selected, press Q and just choose add camera. If you have something selected, you're going to have a contextual menu based on that. And with that, we can begin positioning our camera. I'll select the camera and we'll give it some settings like 120. Just give it a really high focal. 
by scaling the empty we can scale the camera but we want to get out of 3d as our pivot point mode and so by just making adjustments to the empty we can deal with it without having to get real intimate with the rest of it and so something like that is a good starting point for us to basically go NPR with this. In fact, I can press Control Shift S and we'll actually save this as the uh, previous version too. And then we can actually save it once again as the next version. So when I go back to the previous version to iterate on it, we won't have to uh, set up the camera in that one as well. So really going NPR with it is super duper easy. I mean, it's really just a matter of me pressing Shift A, going to Grease Pencil and using Collection Line Art it's really that easy. I am so impressed with the work that has gone into it. Blender always adds stuff that surprises me, like stuff that um, I never expected to see. So I'm actually trying to move the uh, line art outside of the collection, but it's being a little stinker. Let's just expand our collection and we'll just drag it here. And now we have it outside the collection. Just something about me and line art. I just like to have my line art outside of the collection. I'm just OCD like that. So with our shape, we're looking at it and let's just basically get ourselves set up for this NPR experience by setting our viewport to white and our shading to flat and our material to basically be, let's see, we could just set that to object as well. And we look at our line art and it looks a little messy at first. If we turn off the line art, this is what we're looking at. So we go to our modifier and you know, sometimes I find that having intersections off just works out better for you than it does without. But most importantly, by going to occlusion, and turning on a range, you can activate the range amounts, which will give you a much better result. So right now the lines are still just way too thick. So for that, we will want to go under style and just divide the thickness by two, basically giving us this as a result. And so if I were to press control space bar, we now see it performing a turntable with it drawing the NPR result. So I've had a hard time pressing F12 and rendering this. I'm, I think there's like an offset or something I'm supposed to do or a sorting that's supposed to happen or Z depth compositing but whenever I press F12 it's never this as a result so I always find myself rendering these in the form of re viewport render animation so I'm always configuring them in the viewport and rendering them but before we conclude let's actually look at our lines and see if there's some things that we can do better let's raise our angle to see if we can get the angle look better let's turn intersections back on which intersections tends to be more helpful than it is not helpful so I just can't deny it. When it comes to the angle, I tend to have the angle up at least until it begins to eat at my curvature and then that's where I stop abruptly. And we're just looking at the rest of our lines to see how good we can get it. Toggling various parameters just to see if there's anything that can be done to alleviate some of our doubles. This area actually looks like a little bit of chaos. It makes me wonder if the uh, mesh itself is actually chaos. You know, we did do quite a bit up here, but we could also take our thickness and divide it by two again, which will make it even thinner, giving us an even finer result. So now when we look at this, this is basically our result. So if I press shift space bar, we're now playing this particular timeline letting it just play out. In fact, as I look at it, I see that there's always more that I want to do to these meshes. Like I always want to send it on to render, but I really can't, can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. So when it comes to editing, line art can get a little bit heavy. So I'll turn off the modifier and then we'll just disable it for a second and turn on viewport outlining and maybe go back to shading in studio just so we could see what's going on. And I'll press D, we'll jump to Ingon, jump to box just to purify it. And we're just gonna cut this area out. We'll press B to bevel, roll the wheel, Q to Q bevel, press X to slice it, and this area is now ours. We will go ahead and do that same cut again, cut down inside of that slice. We'll press B, which will already activate the Q bevel for us since it was used last time. 
and that will give us something like this. But instead of using a cut, we actually want to change it to a slice. Click to apply, and now we have this piece. And from here, let's go ahead and turn our line art back on. Change back to flat. Toggle the modifier. And now we have these little happy swoops here, which they just help sometimes. Another thing is we can go to this area and try to draw a shape, but the line art modifier is just so crazy whenever it comes to calculating. So really, you know, if you really want to test the limits of your computer, try cutting when you have a line art modifier present. I don't think it's supposed to be a thing. So just one of those things I've noticed and we'll just cut this circle in, but we'll press B to bevel and we'll go inside the helper and just do a reverse bevel which will give us this shape and let's just click to apply and we see that we need to also lower to auto smooth as well so now we have the, these little pieces going as well we might want to put one more you know these little last minute details will really help make the black and white render just pop a little bit and voila so from here, let's just select our line art, re-enable it, turn off viewport overlay selection or viewport overlay display. And there we are now looking at our final result, which is this little router quickie. So, you know, like I said, these are little warm ups that I like to do whenever I'm just goofing off at the computer. However, they have become a fun kind of form study of sorts, just playing with different configurations of playing with contour bevels and cutting at different angles. But with that, I'll wrap up this video and I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.